Welcome to the Redneck Trucker Channel, where we smack the stupid out of people so you don't have to. <laughs> you talk about no understanding of the scientific method, or... Well, that's not true. I'm quite familiar with it. Empirical evidence and uh, scientific testing, positions, hypotheses, theories. It's all uh, very interesting and great reading. Um, and I like science. Uh, Einstein is one of my greatest heroes. Uh, Einstein being a deist, of all things. Uh, Do all your heroes, like Einstein, have to believe in something in order for their facts to be valid? Do you not believe in black holes because Stephen Hawking is the one who explains them? Do you not believe in the holographic principle because Leonard Susskind, a noted atheist, was the scientist who came up with it? Citing who did what or who believes in what does not make their position more valid. Newton was an alchemist and believed all kinds of crazy things but does it negate the fact that he discovered gravity and that his principles are still today some of the best we've ever had no and um, Planck another deist uh, Voltaire another deist uh, according to a 2009 uh, poll according to a 2000 poll You know, I'm I'm looking in your underbar here, and and I, I I'm I'm not seeing the link. If you can't prove it, it doesn't exist. You know, something that is asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. Put in links to the stuff you talk about, or it's not a valid point. And are you an expert on New Age philosophy? Have you studied it? Have you read the books? Have you read A Course in Miracles? Uh, of course, a miracle is probably the most influential book uh, in my life. I Right. You want me to be an expert in New Age philosophy when you follow a book that was written by a Jewish woman who was channeling Jesus? Right. I mean, it just totally... I was an atheist for 31 years until I was age 31 and read A Course of Miracles. So what else happened to you when you were 31 and suddenly became religious? You read the Bible at age 14, and you admit that it didn't make any sense at the time. Then, after reading another book, A Course in Miracles, you decide that the Bible does have something to offer you. Some pieces now make sense to you? Or did you just think that you wouldn't live past the age of 30, as many of us do, and decided to start paying attention now. All in, I'm living in a house. That is a miracle. Jesus got me this house. It, it, it's unbelievable. Uh, this is the house of my dreams. I, uh, I sold a one-bedroom piece of shit condo in Denver. And with that money, I came out here and I bought a two-bedroom house on a quarter acre of land in California uh, for less than what I paid, you know, for less than what I sold my condo for. So where's the miracle in selling a property in a large metropolitan area, Denver, Colorado, and buying a two-bedroom, one-bath house in the sticks outside of Death Valley? You know, if you would have sold the condo in Denver and bought a mansion in Beverly Hills and still had money left over, that's a miracle. What you had was a real estate transaction. But uh, eventually, you know, when you win the lotto like 20 times in a row, eventually you realize that you're not just lucky. You know, there's something going on. Oh, really? Did you win the lottery 20 times in a row? Did you buy 20 tickets in 20 individual weeks and win every single time? That would be a miracle. 
Anything else is speculation and wishful thinking. Uh, the spiritual world anymore. So meditation is the practice of quieting that ego mind. And once you get the ego mind quiet, uh, you can practice listening to the, the, the quieter reality that we all live in. Meditation is tapping into your own subconscious. It's scientifically proven that your mind state in meditation is similar to dreaming. When you meditate, you are not quieting your ego, you are simply dreaming while you're awake. Ego wants us to continue. Ego wants us to exist. Ego wants to live because I'm special and only I can convey my special brand of wisdom unto the universe. I am ego! Hence a belief in the afterlife. Letting go of ego is when you realize you're just another animal on this planet. It is mind blowing. Cat, you gotta knock that off. Damn it, Cat. Well, that was no miracle. Only a miracle that the camera is still working. Let me get this set up. Okay, this is called counting the hits and not the misses. When the cat knocks over the camcorder, the only miracle is that the camcorder didn't break. Huh? Well then in that case, why did God let the cat knock the camcorder over in the first place? Look, this happens all the time with our little tiny brains here. Is that a plane crashes killing 199 people. One four-year-old walks out without a bruise or a get cut on him. And yet, that's a miracle. Well, guess what? It ain't a miracle to 199 people. Alright. So, it is a miracle that the camera's still working. Okay, I lost my train. Look, our brains are wired to see patterns in chaos, to superimpose intelligence where there is none. These were beneficial traits to cavemen, but more and more they are becoming detrimental traits to modern man. Nobody sees the world the same way. We all see the world differently. If any kind of you ask any traffic cop, you know, if there's a traffic accident and there's twenty different witnesses, twenty different people saw it, twenty different things. See, here you're just missing the point. Everyone agrees there is a traffic accident. Despite their different perceptions of who did what or what happened at what time, everyone agrees there was a traffic accident. I mean, you know, it's easy to prove and that uh, just be in love, you know. I don't know if you've ever been in love, but uh, for most people, and myself included, uh, the day we fall in love, the world just shifts, you know, the sky's a little bluer, the birds seem to be singing to us, uh, things just go a little easier, life makes sense. Sorry to say it, buddy. Love is a chemical change in your mind that is driven by hormones released by your emotional state and pheromones. Your perception isn't driven by your beliefs. The drugs in your head is what's driving it. Your brain, which creates the mind, is driven by chemicals and not something outside of you. It's inside of you. I hate to sound so dry and clinical about this point because love is one of the most obscure and beautiful things that a human can experience. However, at its core, in reality, it is nothing more than a chemical response to an outside stimulus. And so everything that we're looking at is really, you know, if the atoms would stop moving, they would just disappear from sight. We couldn't even see it. It's just that the illusion of the atoms spinning uh, makes it possible for us to even see anything. But it, it's very much, you know, it's very, no, the world is an illusion. It's not as we see. If all of the atoms stopped, everything would stop existing. Everything. Rene Descartes, here I come. This world is definitely, we, our perception of the world is absolutely an, an illusion. The train will still hit you, even though your perception is that it's not going to hit you. You can't change physical reality by just your perception. 
And because their beliefs are different, they see a different world. So, let's go on with it. If our perception truly changed our reality, then I'd be able to grow gills and live in the bottom of the ocean. The ideas of you being on a TV screen and that there's even a screen there is all just a product of the mind. See here you drank the telepathic Kool-Aid. <laughs> there's no evidence that your mind can create anything outside of your own head despite your perception that it does. If your monitor is merely a perception then why did you have to go buy it? Why can't my perception create my reality? I want a brand new laptop computer. I visualize it and it just doesn't appear. I have to go buy it from a retail store. Dreaming about something does not make it real. No one dreams about terminal cancer. No one dreams about dying in an auto accident. If dreams were real we would all be millionaires. But if you've ever had a dream, you would know that it, you can, your mind can create an entire uh, universe and you don't even suspect it for a second that it's your creation. And if you wholeheartedly believe that dreams come true, then please see the link to my Amazon wish list underneath. The holy cow, I started, uh, you know, I started um, doing the meditations and uh, I, I have seen mountains move. You know, I've seen uh, rainbows across the sky and uh, I've, seen all, I've seen the weather change. I have seen so many things just right before my eyes melt into something else. And that is because the world really is just a dream. And uh, it blows my mind still. You know, I still think of the floor as being solid and all that stuff, but I know that just like my dreams at night, this world is a dream. You see, when you live in this new agey existence where you think it's all a made up reality and that it's all a construct of our collective unconsciousness, it's easy enough to blow off any issue. Global warming, wars in the Sudan, nuclear weapons in the hands of Iranians. You just shrug your shoulders and say, Oh, it's all those negative people out there just thinking all those negative thoughts. I'll be so glad when I'm rid of this world and I've moved on. It, see, you're not dealing with reality. You're not dealing with the world that you were born into. And this makes the world a far worse place. Instead of working to make the world a better place, the world becomes inconsequential to you. You think it's not real. What is real to you is the afterlife. You're actually looking forward to an existence of lounging on Stay puff marshmallow clouds and riding pink unicorns to work every day. Except for we never die. Uh, yeah, I know the body dies, but the truth is the body never really lives. Um, as Jesus said in the New Testament, uh, it is a spirit that gives life, the body is of no avail. Um, just meditate on that, what that, what that entails. If that's true, what... Do you think Charles Manson will live on forever too? Have you considered the fact that your future lives will have Charles Manson in them? What about Adolf Hitler? If they aren't included in your future life imaginings, then your belief system fails. If you dare to, to investigate this stuff, instead of just, you know, calling it bullshit without investigating it, uh, it'll blow your mind, because you'll find that all this information has been known all over the world, at all times, you know, since the beginning of man, Man has always had spiritual knowledge. There's always been sages going around who uh, knew, knew this stuff. And if you look at every religion, I don't care if you go to the you know, Congo and you look at these primitive natives, um, they've got the same, you know, as the Mormons or uh, the Jews or the Islamics or, I mean, in every religion, they will all teach you the same things, and that is that there's life after death. Uh, 
in order to have an afterlife, you have to have something that contains mass. Even if you believe that the spirit of the soul is nothing but an energy wave, energy waves contain mass. Science has proven that at the point of death, you don't lose any mass. Not, not anything negligible. You might fart, and if you're saying the soul is a fart, then you're full of shit. Wait a minute, you may be on to something. You talk about so many people believing in afterlife, therefore it must be true. You neglect to mention that all of these people believe in a different afterlife. If it were true, everyone would believe in the same afterlife. Since they don't, it must be wrong. Here again, the reason why populations across the globe believe the same things is because everyone has an ego and everyone doesn't want to die. You know, God's just fine. You can't kill God. <laughs> That's the message. You can't hurt God. Of course you can't kill God. He's a figment of your imagination. You can't kill a pink fluffy unicorn because they don't exist ourselves cannot really be hurt. Yeah, physically we can be hurt, but no other way. Uh, emotionally, uh, mentally, you know, our heart, our spirit, our soul, none of that can act. It's all invulnerable. It cannot be harmed. Hey, everybody. Don't panic. I mean, I'm only crushing your head. And it doesn't bother me at all, because uh, it can't. It can't really. When we are emotionally hurt by something, uh, we are reacting to an illusion because minds cannot really attack another mind. Power of positive thinking does not mean that you can ignore emotional pain and sorrow. Choosing to be a happy person in a happy world is just your own self-centered perception of what you want to see. You are an ostrich with your head buried in the sand. Really? Really, you don't care what anyone else thinks. You made a 40-minute video response to a six-minute video. Uh, I think about Clint Eastwood, you know, how he was always a tough guy and all this, and he really was a freaking puss. And I hate to say that because Clint Eastwood's one of my heroes, you know, I mean, like the movie uh, The Unforgiven. Wow, what a great movie. Um, but, uh, you know, if somebody pissed, Clint Eastwood off, you know, somebody assaulted him, Clint didn't take it, he'd fight back. And that's really an act of coward, not cowardice, but, uh, you know, it's like, what, what was Clint fighting about? What does he care what anybody else thinks? He shouldn't have even... Obviously, you do have some issues if you think that the characters Clint Eastwood plays in films is who he really is. You're idolizing an imaginary construct. Oh, wait. Yeah, that seems to fit. You believe in God. Yeah, and the Egyptians, too. Come on, man. How'd they build those pyramids? We still don't know how they built those freaking pyramids. I mean... We use the same kind of earthen ingredients available to the ancient Egyptians 4,500 years ago. These massive blocks have the same chemical makeup and appearance as blocks of the Great Pyramid. Look at the Mayan calendar. It's better than our own. I mean, come on. There's, there's so much... So, the Mayan calendar is better than our calendar? Well, I think I have the Mayan calendar beat. See? Mine goes to fucking January. <laughs> because they, they believe that the Earth was flat. Yeah, now we believe it's round, and then the uh, next... What are we going to believe in the next 500 years? Well, you know, there's already people like me who believe that doesn't even exist. So, uh, you know... How do we know that it's round? There's no proof that it's round. I mean, yeah, we've got theories, we've got evidence, we've got observations. But there's no solid proof. Every airplane that takes off from any airport and goes to a separate destination has to factor in the curvature of the Earth, or it won't end up where it wants to go. Just because you haven't physically walked around the Earth to prove to yourself that it's round doesn't mean that there, that there is a possibility that it is flat. If you refuse to learn anything without physically doing it yourself, then explain why an imaginary being is something that you think is real. No, no, a lot of a lot of um, knowledge has actually been lost, um, and 
and few people are really interested in it. And there's a reason for that, and that's because there are people in power who don't want uh, a smart society beneath them, uh, because smart people are hard to rule. And so they uh, they keep us, you know, they... they Loss of use of natural plants for treatment isn't a dumbing down of society. We've simply learned more effective ways to produce those drugs, and we pay companies to provide them to us. However, if you'd like to create aspirin from willow bark, there is information on the internet on how to do that. Uh, go ahead and do it. Corporations haven't taken this information away from you. You're just too lazy to find out how to do it yourself. You must take the initiative and learn about what interests you. It's not up to society to spoon feed you knowledge. Actually, you're wrong. You're actually a child of God. You're an eternal, loving being. You will live forever. Your mind, your spirit, your soul, your heart goes on forever. Only the body appears to live and to die, but it's really nothing to do with you. I know you don't believe it. Uh, I know it's hard to believe because you've had so many people tell you that, you know, quite the opposite. But um, Okay, this is what you're saying when you say you believe in reincarnation and things like that. Um, that we have basically 80 years every time or less to relearn our basic skills alphabets, counting, social interactions, adolescence, puberty, reproductive, reproduction, aging, bodies, and aging minds. We have to do this every single time we are reincarnated. Isn't this an incredible waste of time and effort? How does this advance a soul? The concept is inefficient, wasteful, and just plain ludicrous. I mean, have you ever just gone and seen a good psychic? I mean, yeah, well, 90% of psychics are bullshit, but there's a 10% out there that will blow your freaking mind. Really? Really? Psychics will blow your mind with the truth. Well, contact James Randi and he'll give you a million dollars if you can prove that it works. Um, there's videos on YouTube that will blow your mind. I mean, look at Buddha Boy. Go look at Buddha Boy. This guy sat in a tree for six months. He didn't eat or drink a damn thing. Uh, Discovery Channel did a, a documentary on him, and they filmed him for 48, 72, I don't know, what is it? Uh, 72 hours, solid. And the kid didn't move for 72 hours. Didn't eat. And actually, if you would have done the research on your own argument, you would have found out that it was 96 hours that Buddha Boy spent uh, underneath the tree while he was being filmed. That's a total of four days. The Guinness Book of World Records has observed a ca and carefully monitored someone for 18 days. Four days is nothing by comparison. Buddha Boy moves from place to place with gaps of months in between sightings of him uh, meditating. Not six years meditating at the base of one tree. Uh, do your research before believing something is true and find out the facts for yourself. You know, it's just, it's just carnal thought. It's just hand and mouth. It's just so primitive, uh, that, that kind of thinking. And it's the people who go into deeper investigation that, um, you know, rise above uh, that kind of mentality. So... I'm sorry, I gotta call bullshit on this. Spirituality is the primitive thinking, not the inverse. Um, following you would be going back for me. Um, you know, it is, it's the people who, uh, who've been where you're at and have risen above that have advanced. And I don't mean that we're better, but uh, um, it just means that, you know, we've tuned into uh, a uh, higher kind of mind. I mean, we've, we've come to realize that the, the mind, the beliefs aren't weak. Beliefs aren't powerless. I mean, there's this crazy idea that what you believe is of no consequence. And that's... <laughs> And like the old game show, Truth or Consequences, uh, if you don't believe the truth or something close to the truth, you will suffer for it. 
See, I started out religious. I didn't start out as an atheist. I went through many religions to get to where I am, an atheist. You see, there are two kinds of atheists here. The first type, type is an atheist from ignorance, like you. Someone who has never been exposed to religion and learned how to be, and didn't learn how to be skeptical. The second type is someone like me who has been through many religions and determined them all to be a load of bullocks. Religion has one thing in common universally. It preys upon fear and ignorance to get financial gain from its followers. The fear may be subtle, but it's always there. Mark Twain said it best. It's easy to fool a person, but it's hard to convince someone that they have been fooled. Now here's a funny clip that illustrates that point. Alright, what's holding up the works? What's all the... the... Oh, what a cute little pink bunny rabbit. Just what I always wanted, my own little bunny rabbit. I will name him George, and I will hug him and pet him and squeeze him. I'm not a bunny rabbit. And pat him and pet him and... You are hurting me. Put me down, please. And rub him and caress him and... I ain't no bunny rabbit! Not a bunny rabbit, George? Then how come you have long ears? How come? Long ears? Oh, <laughs> those aren't ears. Those are sleeves. So now put me down, please. Huh? Oh, George, you were naughty to pretend you was a bunny rabbit. I will punish you good. Battle, George.